Hello and welcome to the Actuarial Data Scientist. In today's video we're going to be covering a problem with percentile matching and one of my favorite things to do is to start off by complaining about the exam itself or the way questions are asked. Um, so the very first thing that really annoys me about this problem is how they chose to show the PDF. Um, in this question, uh, you know, it ends up working out to be the exact same thing but you'll notice there's this uh, theta to the power of gamma in the denominator and if you were to go to the log logistic in the formula sheet provided for the exam itself the notation is actually different uh, so they do x divided by theta to the power of gamma which is the same as theta to the negative one which is theta to the one in the denominator um, so they're doing this really arbitrary reshuffling of the PDF and I don't know why they chose to do that um, now that wouldn't matter if we were to just take this PDF at face value um, but this is another kind of trick of the question which is when we're dealing with percentiles we're actually interested in the CDF um, so really this is a red herring um, you need to first recognize you don't need the PDF at all you need the CDF um, and instead of you know trying to derive it you can just go to the log logistic distribution uh, and then go to the corresponding CDF. Um, so here because U uh, is used in other formulas provided uh, the CDF equals U and then U equals this thing. Um, but the first step of this problem is to recognize you need the CDF when you're dealing with percentiles not the PDF and then to not question yourself like I did when I first see this PDF and it looks different. Um, so that's just a minor complaint where I've, you know, in an exam setting that's going to waste one or two minutes with me kind of questioning why it looks different. Um, but all you need to know is that this is the corresponding CDF that we're going to be using for this problem. All right, with that said, jumping into required knowledge. So first off, you need to know uh, percentile matching estimation. So um, I don't think I remember reading this in the source material that I reviewed. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's in there somewhere, but uh, this is more of something you can just kind of parse together given the name. So, you know, using percentile matching, knowing what your expected percentile is versus your observed, can you then solve for the actual parameters of the distribution? And if you can, then that can serve as a estimation. So for this problem, uh, what we're going to see is that there are two moving parameters. So we're going to use a system of equations, and that's why they give you the 20th and 80th percentile and not just, say, the median. Um, so that you can then apply systems of equations here. Next, you need to know uh, that for a percentile, estimation it's going to be the rank order divided by this total number of sample observations plus one. Um, so a way of thinking about this is if you only observed one sample you would then and then I asked you what uh, percentile would you estimate could you estimate with this value you would say the median if I had to guess where this falls in a distribution is going to be probably at the 50th percentile of that distribution is my best guess that's going to, you know, minimize the error of my estimation. Or I guess maybe not, maybe it would be the mean, but uh, you get the idea. If I have to pick a corresponding percentile, I would guess median. If I have two observations, I would guess that the smaller of the two would be the 33rd percentile, 0.3 repeating. I'm coming up with 32.33 uh, repeating, of course. Um, or I would guess and I would guess the second observation of the two would be two over two plus one, two thirds uh, percentile ranking. So that, that would be, given a sample size, what corresponding ranking would you estimate for that observation? And then finally, we need to know uh, the weighted average for non-exact percentiles. Um, so this is the way Mahler does it in his solution manual, which is if you have um, and I have an example here. So let's say we have this sample of data and I have it ordered to make it easier and they very nicely work out to just be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, 
if I wanted to estimate the 20th percentile, well, that's really simple. What is the 2 over 9 plus 1? Uh, we have that exact value, so I would say the second from the smallest uh, observed value is my estimation for the 20th percentile. However, if I ask for the 23rd percentile, I would say that is surrounded by the 20th percentile and the 30th percentile. And I'm going to give them an equal weighting, uh, or, sorry, I'm going to give them the weighting that then corresponds to the 23rd percentile. Uh, so 70% goes to the 20th because it's closer to 23, and then the remaining 30% of weight is going to go to the 3rd or 30th percentile. Um, and then what you're doing is you're just assuming uh, that there's a uniform uh, distribution between those ranks, uh, which is a simplifying assumption. That's how you end up with these uh, just constants of 0.7 and 0.3 uh, that sum to 1. So, at this point, I think we have everything we need to know, uh, minus the bullet point of just looking up the corresponding distribution for this problem. Um, so, now we can actually jump into it. So, first off, we want to know what are our sample observations for the 20th and 80th percentile. Um, so, this is a little bit, uh, I, I feel like this is extra work that is silly for this problem. I wish they gave us 19 observations and then you could just pick the corresponding 20th and 80th percentile, uh, but they give us 20 and that means the fourth observation is the 4 over 21st percentile and then the fifth is the 5 over 21st percentile. And so what two weights do we assign those such that uh, their weighted average results in the desired 20th percentile? And so when we solve for that, we get 80%. So which one of these is closer? So that's going to be the 4 over 21st is closer to the actual 20th percentile we want. So that corresponding observed value is going to get 80% weight, and then we're going to give 20% weight to the fifth observation. So scrolling back up to the problem, we go 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to give 80% weight to 38 and then 20% weight to 42 to get our sample observation for the 20th percentile. <coughs> for the 80th, we get lucky. So here, same thing in reverse, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. <coughs> they're both 74. So again, it's going to be 80 and 20% weight, but since they're both 74, the result's just going to be 74. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, here we have that 80% weight for the 38, 20% for the 42, and we get an uh, observed 20th percentile of 38.8. So now that we have our two corresponding percentiles, uh, we can go to the CDF. So again, this is you're going to pull this from the tables of uh, the uh, distributions that's provided for MAS1. So we have the CDF, and then we know that the CDF, uh, when it equals 0.2, that's the 20th percentile. So, um, but before I even do that, I, I choose to simplify. So this is the notation they gave us. Um, if you multiply everything by theta over x to gamma, uh, two of the terms cancel, and then you're only left with one. So it just simplifies things. Uh, then we can set our, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, here we can set the x value of our observed percentile equal to its expected percentile. So we say 0.2 is equal to observing an x value of 38.8. Uh, and then we we'll do the exact same thing with the 74. And now we have a system of equations. So uh, what I do here is I do multiply both sides by this denominator then 1 divided by 0.2 is going to be uh, 5, and then subtract 1 is 4, and then all you're left with is this term on the left. So that's how we're getting from this mass on the left to what we have on the right. And doing that for both of them, that creates something uh, a bit simpler. At this point, we have a nice form to apply the system of equations, or really, actually, we're just going to divide one by the other and terms are going to cancel quite nicely. Um, so when we divide the one by the other, the thetas are going to cancel. 
and then all we're left with is a function with gamma. Um, at this point we're just doing some basic arithmetic and then finally the um, bit more complicated dealing with this weird base you need to know that um, taking the log base something of something else is the same as taking the log of that something divided by the log of that base where the given log function can have any base. Um, so that's how we're getting uh, this calculation over here. So we're choosing this base so that way it cancels with this 1.907216 to a constant of 1 and then all you're left with is gamma on the left side. But then on the right side when we have uh, this log base 1.9 of 16 uh, we can say that's the same as log base 10 of 16 divided by log base 10 of 1.9 or log base e. I forget which one is the default. I think the default's e in the calculator but um, the base on the right does not matter um, and so that's how you go about calculating this. Uh, I needed a personal refresher. I apologize if that's more detail and you, you just know to do that. Um, but that, that's how you deal with weird bases for logs. Um, so once we do all this we get our gamma hat. So we have our estimator for this of being 4.294 um, and then the final step is, the question is actually asking for the estimator for theta. So the final step is then to just pick one of the equations above. Uh, here I chose the 80th percentile, but you could have chosen the 20th and that would have worked just fine. And then you solve for theta when you plug in that corresponding uh, gamma hat. And that results in a final estimator of 53.6. And we see that falls in the range of E. So E is our final answer. As always, thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing if you find these videos helpful. And until next time, have a good one. Bye.